Welcome to Unifier.tv, where truth has no fear. Um, I want to come to you guys just, of course, like always, to encourage you. Um, but, uh, you know, the, God gave me this prophecy. And I'm going to make this quick because I don't want to talk forever and never get to the, the impactful point that I know that God gave me to give to you guys because it, it, it meant so much to me. I know that it, it, I know that it's going to make a difference in your life. So, you know, I, I was at the basketball court this morning. I work out every morning. Um, in some aspect I you know, you can't hit it seven straight days a week and, you know, target the same area. So of course, if you don't take a rest day, at least vary it up majorly. You should definitely take a rest day though, but today's not that day. So I went to the basketball court this morning and, uh, you know, it, it, I was shooting around and, and today my shot was off. I just, my, my mind and my heart just wasn't into it this morning. I, uh, I really had a lot more in my mind. I had a lot of things I wanted to get to today. There's a lot of things that are coming up, uh, important dates that I believe for my career that I'm really highly anticipating. Anyway, my shot was way off this morning and, you know, so I was getting visibly frustrated. So there's a guy that's there. He, he's there pretty much as often as I am. And, uh, you know, he was telling me, say, you know, your shot is a little off because of your, of your frame. You're not framing your body up to face the basket when you shoot. And, you know, I've been shooting the same way all my life. It's actually the only way I was ever able to make a basket. It's the same way I've been shooting because, you know, you know, I was always super frail growing up. Super, like growing up, I was always super skinny. And so I was always afraid to drive the lane. I never wanted to drive the lane because I was always worried about getting elbowed and getting, you know, run over, or, you know, running into a brick wall of a person. So, so I never really wanted to do that. So anyway, the point is, he's telling me, he's saying, you know, you got to frame your body up when you shoot. And I told him, I said, the reason I did it, because I was always frail and I always had to shoot from wherever I was. I was never, never really willing to drive the lane. That just wasn't my area of expertise. I didn't like running down there, possibly getting hurt. Sometimes I did get hurt. And so I had to learn to shoot from wherever I was. And being that most of the time people were taller than me, I had to learn how to shoot from wherever I was and shoot over them. It was kind of like that Steph Curry thing. So eventually I started making them. So whenever you have games at the park, typically I'd be the last person picked up if I ever got picked up at all. Until one day I was out there just shooting around and eventually people started picking me up because everybody said, oh, you got a shot, have a natural shot. Well, anyway, today my shot was off and he, told, he was telling me that it's because of how I'm framing my body. Now, in my mind, I didn't want to hear what he had to say. Nice guy, nicest guy in the world. He wasn't telling me anything to be rude, but I didn't want to hear anything he had to say. I didn't want to hear it. You know, that's just how sometimes we are. We, we like the way we do things. We're used to doing things a certain way. And even we, if we don't look at it as, you know, it, even if in our eyes, we know it's not the best, we're comfortable with it. So, you know, but I was like, you know, let me humble myself because I'm watching this guy shoot every time we go. And this guy is making them like out of the park. Um, and so I was like, you know, this guy definitely knows way more than me. He's probably, like, probably actually played on a team before and I haven't. So let me go ahead and tune in. So anyway, what happened was I was listening to him, practicing what he was telling me as he was telling me. And, you know, eventually the shots were going in. I mean, I took a little bit of a break after he left because he left. He said he'll work with me anytime he's in there. And he took a break. I'm sorry, he left. I took a break. So I came back after a few minutes. And my mindset was to try exactly what he told me. Hold the ball the way he told me get my release the way he told me and frame my body up to face the basket the way he told me. Now I found myself doing it my way a lot of those times, but when I did it his way, the shots went in 90% of the time smooth too. That was the best I'd ever shot a ball since I'd ever shot basketball ever. I'm 33 years old. And the few minutes that he gave me gave me a better shot percentage than, than I've ever had before. Was I making them consistently, fairly consistently, but very well consistently before today? Yeah. 
But did he give me a better way of doing it? Yes. So I had to acknowledge that. But I still found myself shooting my old way. And I was like, I missed it. And then as soon as I would shoot it, I would realize why I missed it. Because I went back to my old way while trying to do it his way. And his way was working way more than mine. But I still find myself going back that way. My point is this. God immediately gave me that analogy of what exactly, not just us conservatives, but right now we are the most guilty of this. We refuse to continue to stay the course of believing that we have won this war. We continue to allow ourselves to get into the position of thinking Trump screwed us. Things are never going to change. Oh, this is taking too long. Uh, this person really hasn't been arrested. This person is really, really hasn't been executed. Uh, why is this being allowed to happen if Trump is still in charge? And this is, this is the thing. I can go in circles with you guys until the weekend telling you all the reasons why Trump is still on our side, why we have not been betrayed, and why all these things that are said to be conspiracy are truth. If anyone should know about conspiracy being truth, it's conservatives. We should know that. So we have to learn to be patient. We have to learn to stay the course. We have to learn how to dissect these things and try to figure out what makes sense and what doesn't because we, we have to tap into the spirit. We cannot figure this out in the flesh. This is not made for the flesh. This is a spiritual war we're in. So you have to understand this. The analogy that God gave me was we have to learn how to allow ourselves to be retrained. As much as we're used to seeing things done one way, we're being used to being we're used to being spoon fed one thing one way by MSM all of our lives that we're still having a hard time breaking away from that. So if we don't see it reported a certain way from a certain place, even if it's a conservative news station, we just don't want to believe it. Why? Because it wasn't on TV. Because our favorite people like Charlie Kirk and Candace Owens or Hodge Twins or ABL or you know Scott McKay or anybody else who we get our intel from, just because they didn't talk about it in great detail with a full storyline, we don't want to believe that it's true because we're used to being fed things by ex experts or so-called experts in a lot of cases. So we have to learn how to be retrained. And to, in order to be retrained, it requires humbling of self. We have to humble ourselves. We have to allow ourselves to be open to change and open to something better, a better way to do things, a better way to look at it. But if we do veer back to that old way, we have to check it. We have to check ourselves. It's like, you know what? That was the old way. Things aren't like that anymore. There's a better way to do this. Yes, that was working. But now that I realize there's a better way, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to jump on it. But that requires humbling of self. You have to allow yourself to change. You have to allow yourself to be taught something. You're never too old. You're never too young. You're never too successful. You're never too broken to be taught something new. So I just wanted to give you guys that outside of just the political realm. Use this in your life. Use this within your family. Use this within your workplace. You're never too far gone, whether it be in success, whether it be in failures, whether it be in, in just in your own head or your way of life. You're never too far gone to be shown something different. And until we can allow ourselves to step back and say, okay, let's see. Let's just see. Let me try this. Let me stick with this because it's it's proven to have been better than what i had or what i thought before all i need to do is stick with it we have to remain patient we have to remain diligent we have to stay strong because whether you guys realize it or not this entire movement would not be what it is without conservatives because as, as anything is proven by now we can't rely on most republicans we can't conservatives have been driving this movement we have been the, the voice against the opposition of, uh, of the liberal crowd. If the liberal crowd would continue to do what they did without us stepping up, we'd have no chance. You have to understand the impact we're making, the damage we're doing. This is not just about the Candace Owens and, and, and the Charlie Kirks and the ABLs and the Hodge twins and the, and the Angela Stantons and the, and the Brandon Tatums. And the and the and Joel and the and the and the and, and the can't believe I drew a blank, can't believe I drew a blank on his name, um, Joe Patrick. So it's not about um those frontline people. It's about us, quote unquote, small people 
who are doing this within our own neighborhoods, our own communities, our own homes, our own workplaces, our own grocery stores. So while those people are on the front lines being seen every day by millions of people, what about us being seen by hundreds or thousands or tens or fifteens or twenties and fives and ones? One person is all it takes to inspire. Before these mask mandates were lifted, I went into Walmart without a mask, which I had been doing for months because I got tired of feeling sick all the time. And once my car accident happened and I wasn't working at that job anymore, I didn't wear it since that day. That was a perfect opportunity for me to break away completely. I was already veering away from it there. I completely broke away from it then. So my, my point is this. I wore my mask. I'm sorry, I, took, I didn't wear my mask in Walmart. And this lady observed me without it. And she said, hey, did they say anything to you? I was like, no, 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 they didn't say a word. She's like, really? I said, no, they didn't bother me. I didn't, I, no. She said, does anyone ever say anything? I say, yeah, I've had people ask me about it, but I say, no, I'm good. I'm not going to wear it. And so um, I decided not to wear it. And so what happened was uh, I decided not to wear it at all. And the lady ended up taking her mask off. The lady takes her mask off and found the strength to say, you know what? Since you're not going to wear yours and they didn't say anything to you, I'm not going to wear mine either. And she felt liberated, like a weight was lifted off her shoulders, but in this case, off her face. So um, my point is this. You have to be that voice that's willing to speak up when others aren't. You have to be willing to talk outside of just your own home and your own couch and with your own, within your own group. People need to hear the truth right now. And if they can't trust anybody, they should at least be able to trust you, their friend. So. Uh, let's continue to push, continue to fight, and remain diligent. God bless you all, and I will see you soon.